As PCs get faster and faster, one of the things we forget about kind of often is capacity. You might have an SSD or hard drive, but after a while, you start running out no matter how many you buy. As a content creator, I have to stuff these drives with all my videos because who knows what could happen with them. So a six terabyte here, a four terabyte here, they still get full and you gotta keep buying more. So I decided, you know what? Let me take care of myself, at least for a little while. I ended up buying the Terramaster F4210 4 bay NAS. So what a NAS is, it stands for, first off, Network Attached Storage. You can pop in your drives, plug it into RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, JBOD, and not only do you have access to your data when you need it, but anyone in your house that you want to give access to has access to it as well. You can use it for so many things like network attached storage, or you can use it as a media server so you could watch movies from your bedroom from here. A lot of cool stuff. We're gonna get into a lot of it here. First, we're gonna go through the unboxing, then how to set it up, and then a few uses to show you how handy it can be. So let's get started. Here she is again, the Terramaster F4210 4 Bay NAS. Now, it does not bring any drives. I had to buy four Western Digital six terabyte red drives. Was a bit expensive, but it'll be good in the long run. I promise and hope. So here we can see the kind of drive description or device description. The box is a plain manila box, nothing crazy about it, which is good. It means you don't pay for the marketing stuff on the box. This does support RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, JBOD and single discs. And a little bit later on, I'm going to describe what each of those are. Just taking everything out of the box real quick. Okay, and nothing else. All right, and I'll get back to that in one second. And then the accessories box. Again, nothing crazy about it, which is great. Here we have the power adapter. So it's going to plug whoa, into this power brick, this into the device. And this goes connected from the wall. I would recommend rather than the wall, either a surge protector, or I would highly recommend a battery backup. A surge protector is good because you don't want to let a surge come in and zap all your data, but a battery backup is even better because that way, if the lights go out, you have that much time until the lights will come back on. It could be a simple blip or it could be a lot longer, but it'll give you enough time to properly shut down the NAS. And then plug it in here. All good to go. Now this cable is almost four feet long. And this cable is a little over three feet long. Okay. Putting that aside for now and just for those of you that are curious about it, it is two amps at 50 to 60 hertz, 12 volts, six amps at 72 watts, 18 of these teeny tiny screws, and I'll go over a little bit what these screws are for. Then also 18 of these tiny silver screws. Very nice. They include a Phillips head screwdriver in case for the off chance you don't have one. Perfect for those screws, of course, as well. Then they include two, what looks like feet for the device, although I would think it comes with it, but maybe in case they fall off. But we are doing an unboxing. So if anything, we'll find that in a little bit. All right, and then two of these little rubber washers to, looks like maybe to hold the drives in place so it doesn't vibrate, but we'll find out soon enough. Now, then we have four labels here for your hard drives. So you can mark on the bay itself what hard drive capacity you have. That's nice. A limited warranty document. This does include a one year warranty. And then 
a TerraMaster storage quick installation guide. So you would go here, then they would walk you through that. But don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through all of that here. And this is great that they included an ethernet cable. This is a CAT6 cable, so that is great. And it is five feet long. All right, now we can get to the drive itself. So, it does come sealed, very important. So this box is eight inches wide by slightly over five inches tall and slightly over eight inches long. Okay. So here we can see LED activity for HDD1, 2, 3, 4, LAN activity and power and a button. Terramaster along the back, the side, and the other side here. The bottom here, serial number, cloud storage NAS server, and then, yep, four feet, but, you know, just in case those fall off, you can change them. Then back here, we have, very important, the two fans to keep the drives cool. These are mechanical drives, at least the ones I bought. So. This will definitely help keep them cool. You can also fit SSDs in here as well. So we have two USB ports as well, which is important because while it does support Ethernet, maybe it's a faster connection if your machine is right next to it. You can just plug in a cable or you can always go through Ethernet. So that being said, two USB 3.0 ports here, one Ethernet port, and then a DC in 12 volt connection right over here. All right. So, oh, look at that. It bounces nicely on those feet. So, that over here is where you're just going to put your finger here and pull the bay out. All right. And that's how it looks like from the outside, which we've already seen. And then when you put your finger here, it opens up so that you can pull it out see what the tray looks like here nothing crazy and then these are those two that we saw in the box those two little rubber grommets in case these fall out so that's nice that they include it all right so then here we can see they have etching for 2.5 inch so that this would be for your ssd or your mechanical 2.5 inch drive and then the entire bay would be for your 3.5 inch drive be it a mechanical drive and some ssds actually do come in 3.5 as well so you could choose whichever you'd like then we'll just take all four of them out since we will be using all four i'll show you how to prepare one and then I'll prepare the other three off camera because it's going to be the same. All right, so then in here you can see there are SATA power and data adapters. Well, I'll circle them on the screen. I don't want to put my finger because then it'll block it. So that's how the drive slides in and connects back there. They're on a SATA plane. Okay, so. All right, so taking these out of the box. Again, these are six terabyte, 3.5 inch Western Digital drives. Standard drives, nothing crazy or weird about them. Okay, so what, how we're going to fit this in is put the drive right in here, push it all the way down, make sure it makes a good connection with the bottom. And then down here, and you might have to move it around a little bit because it doesn't go completely flat back up here. Just make sure that you have one screw here, one screw here, and one screw here. Now, if you have any more down here or up here, the more you do screw in, the less noise it'll make because of vibration. But we have one, two, and three here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the silver screws and just screw that in, one, two, 
and three here. All right, so if you remember, this little latch here was at the top coming down. So what we need to do just to match these guys up, you want to look, but I've already looked. And I'm bringing it in a little bit closer. Just slide that in. The SATA ports are going to connect. You notice how that's towards the bottom. Those SATA ports are towards the bottom as well. Might take you a few tries to get it in there perfectly. There we go. And then push here with your fingertips to make sure it slides in. You don't push with here because this is the mechanism that's going to be locking up here. And then when this is all the way pushed in, you lock it in place. Now I'm going to repeat that process with the other three. Give me one second. All right, so now to start things off, I'm gonna turn this guy around and we're gonna go ahead and connect the power adapter. Plug in one end over here. And the other end, I'm going to plug into my what's up so we can see how much power it's going to take up. All right, with the system off, 0.2, 0.3 watts, so you can see that right over here. So it is taking up some power, but nothing yet. We haven't powered it on just yet, so that's barely nothing. Now we're going to connect the Ethernet connection and the other side of the Ethernet cable directly to your modem or to your router. All right, so going off of the manual, I went to support.terra-master.com slash quick guide, or I went here and it took me to the quick guide. So I'm going to enter in my information, one sec, then product category, it is a TNAS, number of drive slot, four, IDA model, F4 to 10, and start. Here just goes over the contents, next, goes over the packing list, very important, just make sure you got everything here. Next, goes over your unit, and then power button. We're gonna get into that in one sec. All right, the rear. Please refer to the following guides to get your TNAS ready, so let's do this. All right, we've already installed the drives. I didn't notice the fourth, but that's okay. Depends on the drive. Well, we've done all that. Here it's going over the SSD. We've gone over the installation. Can only connect to one network port during initialization, so we're good. Yep. Short press the power button. Click next. Is your TNAS ready? All data contained. So over here, we are on Windows. Okay, so it's downloaded the TMAS software. So let's go ahead and install it. We could run it from within the zip file. Okay, welcome to the TNAS PC setup wizard. Nothing crazy there. And then click close. We can close out of here once you run the TNAS PC on your computer. So let me go ahead and move that here. Start this up. Allow access through Defender. Searching 45, and I'll be covering the Mac because, well, that's information for my drive. Okay, so then here it tells you the information, and we have all the same. Great. Okay, TNAS PC can't find your TNAS. Well, it can. Okay, now click Login. Okay, it's initializing. Right here, it would show your IP address and then start. Using an incompatible desktop hard drive is likely to cause a slow responsive. That's fine, we're good. Confirm. All right, so here it's showing all of the drives that we have connected. Right now, it's checking the drives. This is going to take three to five minutes. I'll fast forward this for you so you don't have to suffer through it. All right, so system will be ready. It's done its thing. I haven't clicked anything more than start and it'll says, it says the system will be ready in 10 minutes.
All right, so now restarting the NAS, take about three minutes, it says. All right, so now we're at the initialization. So let's go back to over here and let's next. So we've already gone through that. We've already gone through initializing the NAS. Let's be initialized before they can use be used. Great. Toss is the operating system for TerraMaster TNAS devices as we've gone over. So let's go ahead and fill in all this information here real quick. Okay, so during the process, we had to initialize the drive. We had to put in our username, our password, and then it asks us to submit for security, go through our email. You got to do that pretty quick. So now here is the part, the RAID portion. So it wants to give me RAID 6. Here is where I like to use the Seagate RAID capacity calculator. So RAID 6, cool. Now. I have four six terabyte drives. So I'll just type that in here. That tells me it gives me 12 terabytes. And then like RAID 5, it offers if two drives fail, then the RAID can still be rebuilt. We're at 12 terabytes though. Now the RAID I prefer and most networks have is RAID 5, 18 terabytes. Now the bad part comparing RAID 5 to RAID 6 is that if one drive dies, you have the other three that it can be rebuilt off of. Now, if two drive fails, then you have a bit of an issue. So then there is also JBOD that I was mentioning before, just a bunch of independent disks. You can put in whatever size disks you want and it will just give you the main capacity of all of them. There is no protection whatsoever on here. If one drive dies, you lose all your data. JBOD is cool, but no data redundancy whatsoever. RAID 0 is for two or more drives. It increases the capacity, giving the performance of each and every drive into one drive, so it's a faster drive. But if one drive dies, you lose everything. Now, RAID 1, it gives you mirroring so you can clone the disk, but you've basically wasted three disks because you can only get up to six terabytes. That's where RAID 5 or RAID 6 comes into play. So. The Terra Master does JBOD, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 6. I wanted to explain it this way. It's a lot easier to explain like that. Then, of course, you know, you can get more capacity and everything. If you want to find this, seagate.com forward slash internal dash hard dash drives forward slash RAID dash calculator. So over here, uh, thank you, but I want more capacity. All right, so then we can see... The capacity has improved here. Data protection space is that one drive. So we'll go ahead and click next. You can choose whatever you'd like, of course. Description, all my stuff. Raid type, five hard drives, one, two, three, four. Storage pool one, capacity 18 terabytes. And next here, we'll make it an X4 volume and then confirm. Next, warning, operation will delete data on the hard drive. Yes, this will erase each and every drive and confirm. This will take about three to 20 minutes. And then using a computer's access toss, bigger, more information, features, all that good stuff. So here it gives you the information to put into your web browser, either here for straight IP, or here for DNS, to get to your TOS or your TerraMaster operating system. So we'll click next here. You might want to store this information. All right, so kind of looks like we're at a different desktop, but this is the TOS. It's a web browser based operating system. Now we are inside of the drive. Okay, getting started, TOS help. Definitely good information to read. I'm just going to kind of skip over everything here. Here it is showing that 87.59% of the CPU is being utilized. I can only assume it's because it's being initialized. It's still doing its stuff before it settles down. Now this uses an ARM V8 64-bit processor. It's a quad core 1.4 gigahertz. Total memory 27.84 used up right now or, or percent used up right now. It only has a gig of RAM. I will mention that this particular model is no longer being made. I bought this a few months ago. It's taken me that long to get to this video. They're now same drive and everything, but it is a two terabyte or two gigabyte memory here. So just wanted to let you know. Yeah, that's why. So volume one is synchronizing. So that's why everything's being used up right now. Okay, 
So then file manager, SMB, FMB. So that's how to get to it. And for Mac, you can use that as well. Okay, so here is home. It's empty, there's nothing here. Public and app data here. You're not going to hang around much over here, okay? And then here are some applications that you can download to make better use of your TerraMaster. Now this is the exciting part. So we can sync all of our data to the Alibaba cloud. I honestly don't know what this is. We can sync it to the Amazon S3. I do know that. Aomi Backupper, long story behind that one. I'll link up a video in case you want to watch it. Just a bunch of different utilities here. They're not all for syncing. They're for a bunch of different stuff. Dropbox, great. Google Drive Sync, great. Mail server, we can run a mail server off of that. Nice. OneDrive Sync. And then one of the greatest things here, aside from the storage part, as I was mentioning before, you can use it as a Plex media server so you can watch your movies and all that good stuff off of here. It also supports MB, not only movies, but photos and music. It's got a ton of features. I love it. For me, for the most part, I'm going to be using it for data storage. Maybe a web server might be good. I'll go ahead and install that. So that way from home, or I'm sorry, let's say I'm at work, I can log in to not my machine, but my web server. That way I don't take up additional power. Now we're using my system and everything, even though I'm not really doing much on it right now. Again, we're basically sitting on the desktop idle. I am recording, so it's taking a little bit more than if I was completely idle. The 30 watts versus, you know, 260 plus my monitor. Okay, I'm actually using 121 watts, but 30 watts versus 121 watts, big difference. That'll help your power bill. And installed, we installed one, a web server, and I'll play with this a little bit more later on. Beta, some beta applications, settings. If you have an, an application you want to install manually, maybe you're a developer. And then we come over here, control panel. We can make some users, user groups, share some folders, remote folders. And then we have a bunch of different things we can do in here. Backup, which is something I'm probably going to go over a little bit later on. We can control or create our backups here. Time machine for Apple. So we can sync up remote access, all the help, technical support, and web server that we installed. TNAS is operating effectively. It's still synchronizing, so, you know, 91 percent utilized that is incredibly high i assume it'll go down a little bit later on but again this is the first time i've actually been using this so this is all relatively new to me but right now i'm liking it i will get some more information on this for you a little bit later on let's see notifications raid one resyncing started this process will take around 667.8 minutes since raid resyncing can slow down drive performance we recommend that you stop using the device until resyncing is complete. Okay, so as I mentioned before, it is only taking up that much CPU utilization because it is syncing here and that's great that that message, that notification exactly spelled it out. So that's cool. Okay, then now for when I clicked on the gear over here, it's giving me everything that we want to get notifications on event wise mute buzzer over here and then so we can select there we go so we can select what language we'd like we click on the globe and then click on my profile up here so we can have some user settings which we would have gone through in the control panel and then we can exit full screen restart and then, like I said, if the lights go out, you know, you're on a battery backup. I have my monitor and my system only on the battery backup. Here you can take care of everything. And security consultant, CPU utilization has exceeded 90%. Please check and see if there's a process running abnormally. This is awesome. It gives you all this information. 
That way, you know, you know if somebody's on your machine. If you're not doing anything, synchronization is not occurring. Awesome, like the more I'm using it, the more I like it. So that is very nice bandwidth. That's under the resource monitor, which should be available under control panel. Yep, resource monitor right over here. Update and recovery, region, hardware and power, notification, security. So a ton of great features on this. Okay, so then from here, I'm going to go to file manager. Whoops, you only need to click it once. And we'll go to public new new shared folder and we'll call it videos I'm going to leave that off for now set permission by user and I have read and write access. You can set your permissions here. Next, there is no quota, but if you wanted one, you can set one. That way you don't fill up the drive and create. Okay, so then after we've enabled the sharing feature, click on your start button, type in control panel, go to the control panel, and then we'll go into programs and features. Turn Windows features on or off. Scroll down a little tiny bit and we'll go ahead and enable SMB 1.0 CIF sharing support. Okay, and we'll click OK here. We're going to have to restart, so give me one sec and I'll be right back. All right, so now that we're back in Windows, I went ahead and opened back up the TOS. So now you go into Control Panel, you go into File Services. SMB CIF services, enable SMB CIF S and click apply. But if you are in a domain, enter your domain name here. And if you want to enable log transmission, which we'll go ahead and do that, why not? Okay, so now we can go into file manager up here one and enter the IP address, which we have right here. And now we have all the folders of the NAS, including the video folder. So for example, we'll go in here, file manager. I get it. And so this is the video file folder, sorry. Let's go create a new one. Hey, I'm here. We'll create it here. Okay, so it loaded it, it's successful. Now I come over here, look at that. That one we just created. So the Terramaster F4 210 so far seems like an amazing device. I'm still playing with it. Unfortunately, I have to wait those 10 or 11 hours for it to synchronize. But you know, for four, six terabyte drives, that's going to take a while. Uh, my buddy Justin over at Dragon Blogger has the two drive version that he had smaller drives in RAID 1, I believe it was, two drives. It took about three hours. Now I have four drives a lot larger, so it's known it's going to take a lot longer. Now, the software was relatively intuitive, kind of told you everything except the SMB CIF portion. It doesn't tell you that you need to enable it so that you can actually get drive mapping and everything to work. Everywhere I looked, nobody had that information, so I kind of found it by mistake on luck. So let me know down in the comments if you want me to make a video on the transfer rate, which unfortunately I couldn't do because of all the processing and other features on this. Are you interested in a NAS? I think everything it can do is pretty awesome. I've used other NASs in the past. They've all been great. I'm expecting no less from this one. And the set of features is amazing. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Give me some feedback again as to maybe something you'd like to see me test if you are all at all interested in this device. This is Iggy with This Bites For You. Again, doing an unboxing setup and a little bit of product usage on the Terramaster F4 210 4-bay NAS system. Iggy out. See you guys.